Hello everyone, this is Robert from Book of Mormon Editions, where we discuss printings, publications, and various editions of the Book of Mormon. Today we will go back to the very beginning and discuss one of the earliest printed works when it comes to the Book of Mormon. What this means is reviewing the circumstances surrounding the original manuscript, which are the original pages written on when the Book of Mormon was verbally dictated. In so doing, we will review a volume that the Joseph Smith Papers published in 2021 called Revelations and Translations, Volume 5, The Original Manuscript. So the background was that Joseph Smith received the Book of Mormon records in the fall of 1827 and began the process of recording the words into English. It's interesting that Emma Smith was one of the first scribes and then Martin Harris came to help in the early months of 1828. We know that these first 116 pages were lost in the summer of 1828. This story of the lost 116 pages are for another time, but it is interesting to remember that it was Emma who encouraged Joseph to reconcile with the Lord again and continue onward. So enters the story of Oliver Cowdery in the spring of 1829, where Oliver and Joseph spend most of the middle of that year working on translating the Book of Mormon. The handwritten pages are called the original manuscript that consisted of, of about 488 pages and finished in July of 1829. These pages were then copied to another set called the printer's manuscript, which were given to the printers for the volume of the Book of Mormon printing, which was then ready by the spring of 1830. So the Joseph Smith Papers published this volume in 2021, highlighting all of the surviving pages of the original manuscript. Often on one side of the page is a photographic image of the page, and then the text on the other side of the book. This photograph and text rendition allows a viewer to go through each surviving page and its accompanying text. So when we mention surviving pages, the story doesn't end in 1830. The original text was also used for the printing of the 1840 Nauvoo edition of the Book of Mormon. And then in 1841, Joseph Smith placed the pages of the original manuscript in a stone box and placed this within the foundation walls of the Nauvoo house, which was under construction at the time. These pages stayed there for over 40 years until the box was removed during building renovations. Unfortunately, time was not favorable to the pages as water seeped in and ruining most of the original manuscript. To date, only about 28% of the original manuscript survives today. Over time, these pages and fragments were acquired by various individuals and inspected by the church where the Joseph Smith Papers volume is the culmination of the documentation and research, so all of us have an opportunity to see these pages as is. So a little background on this Joseph Smith Papers volume is that this is a tabletop volume measuring 12 by 9 inches and a few inches thick with an accompanying dust jacket. It's very large as it contains pictures of all the known pieces and accompanying text. It was even uh, fun pulling it out for uh, the young men to look at just to see if they could read the cursive writing contained within. The primary work for this was taken from Royal Skousen's research with significant contributions from Robin Jensen of the Church History Department. I had a chance to speak with Robin Jensen on this volume and he said that it was an interesting work on this to collect the pages and the pictures and verify all of the text. He also mentioned that as a historian, it's a challenge to look at the pieces and parts and not be able to see the full puzzle. But it's natural for a historian only to have a partial perspective on a project like this. I thought it was interesting insight, as when we look back in the past, it's true that we don't have all of the facts and that we might never be able to. So we make our best guess at historical details and fill in the blanks as best as possible. Which should add to some humility when we look back at history. We don't know all of the details and we should be gentle when it comes to historical criticism, especially when looking through modern day lenses. For example, the volume makes mention that there were several scribes regarding this original manuscript. We can tell by the various penmanship of the writers, and we can compare this to the known writings of the likes of Oliver Cowdery and several of the Whitmer family. However, there is one scribe that's listed as scribe number three, and that's it. 
For all research and comparative writing analysis, we still have an anonymous scribe that no one can identify. How amazing is this? To have someone so close to the beginning of the restoration and not be recognized or known or personally appreciated. I think this gives some degree of reverence to this as the message of the Book of Mormon is as important as those involved in it. However, I look forward to the day, maybe even the afterlife, where we can discover who this unknown scribe is and shake hands of scribe number three and say a heartfelt thank you to being part of the restoration. In the meantime, this volume is an amazing resource as there's hundreds of pictures and details of analysis, even down to the smallest of pieces. What's also impressive is the amount of supplemental material found in the introduction and indexes. The introduction goes through the timeline and historical details of the original manuscript, as well as gives an understanding of, of those who were involved and when. As which, this volume along with the Joseph Smith papers can be purchased in hard copy form through Deseret bookstores. However, all of the material found can be found free of charge on the Joseph Smith Papers website. There's even an acknowledgement that if more materials gets discovered, it will be published online and added to the existing online documentation. This is significant as it's very noble of a cause to publish all of the papers Joseph Smith was involved in, both the inspiring and the challenging, free of charge for all to look at, inspect, and review. So thanks everyone for sharing some deep details regarding the original manuscript of the Book of Mormon and this volume 5 of Revelations and Translations within the Joseph Smith Papers. As always, if you have a special or unique printing of the Book of Mormon that you'd like reviewed here, please contact me at bomeditions at gmail.com. Thanks everyone.